This trip has shown me that everyone worships in a different way and it really brought me out of my comfort zone and now like I'm not afraid to raise my hands or close my eyes or just enter into the, the presence of God during worship. When we first started Roar, I worried, or not worried, but thought a lot more about the technical things like who's singing this note, me playing this chord, that type of thing. And I think from the beginning of the trip to the end, I really learned to kind of let that stuff go and focus on God because that's, that's the whole point of worship anyways, is to take the attention off of us and put it on Him. The end of the trip, I didn't care what I sounded like. I just wanted to get up there and just get lost in what I was actually singing, the words that I was speaking to everybody. And I was so excited to just share God's words. And that's that was cool. That was definitely a big change for me because I never thought I would be somebody to be like that, but I'm so happy that I am. This trip has made a huge impact on me and made me realize that it's way more important to actually worship God instead of just saying the words and trying to act cool in front of your friends by not singing instead of actual, actually forgetting about your friends and worshiping the one who made you. I think it was towards the end of last year, we had that group come in from, I think it was Pennsylvania. Is that Pennsylvania? Yep. Yeah, they came in and that was just, the whole school got impacted by that. Everyone, everyone crowded the front of the stage. Everyone did. And I remember that day talking to Mr. Burton and he was just saying, you know what, maybe we could do that. You know, they don't, we don't have to have other people come in. What if students from our school could do something like that and start something like that? And so him and I started getting talking about you know, the production side of things, so I could help out there. And then also, you know, what we could do inside the school that would help. Um, and people that I knew or he knew in the school that were had different talents or whatever I could um, add to the group. And so, you know, just from that, our vision was just, you know, leaders in our school that can help bring chapel alive and also go out like we did on tour and show the people the love of Jesus. So that was the kind of our intention. I think we did pretty well with that on tour. I think... Um, what we had in our heads actually played out pretty well. So, I'm Tyler Laws and I'm a senior. ROAR stands for Rely On and Rejoice and it is a group of students and teachers 
Um, that's a praise team that goes around to different places, churches in the community, a big trip over Winterham, and we just sing and try to lead people in worship. My name is Emma Ray, and I'm in ninth grade. Well, I heard that they were having a worship team, and I was like, oh, you know, like a traveling worship team, that'll be fun. Um, but as I started to like prepare for my audition, I was like, I can't see myself doing this. I was like, and honestly, I got to the point where I was like, I don't even know if I want to audition, but it's kind of crazy how God uses um, his timing and his plans. You know, like our plans never match up with his. I'm Natalie and I'm a sophomore. I had been in band in middle school and I had always wanted to be in some kind of band. We didn't have Roar last year. And then when I heard about it, I got really excited because I play piano and I was like, oh, that sounds really interesting. I'd want to be a part of a group. I was shy and nervous and everything, but it's something that I thought that would help me really grow. Just being in a band that always interested me, so I decided to go for it. My name is Patrick and I'm in 12th grade. My expectations going into this trip was just to see how life was on the road and uh, just see how my friends were uh, just around strangers instead of their friends at school and see how their walk was with God in front of strangers rather than friends at SES. I am Krista Burden. I'm in 10th grade. Well, before we left, I was obviously extremely excited. I felt kind of cool because I got to tell people, yeah, I'm about to go on tour with my worship team. We, we brought sleeping bags for one night. One night. And no one on the whole, I think Deshaun was the only person that rolled up his sleeping bag. And, did you do it? Yes. Okay, and Catherine. And Catherine. And Catherine. But, oh my gosh, all the equipment in there. And then just look behind me, there's a pile of sleeping bags. I aren't even rolled up, so I was just shoving them in the back of the van as hard as I could to get them to fit. But other than sleeping bags, every, packing wise, everything was good. <laughs> I'm not a part of Roar, I'm just some Wait, random black guy. <laughs> no, no! Do it. My name is Catherine, too, and I'm a senior. Well,. We, I'm not a morning person to start off with, so when I got there, I wasn't in the best mood just because I knew we were about to be traveling so much, like all day. And so I jumped in the car and I grabbed a middle seat. I don't know why I decided to sit in the middle, but yeah, I just, I only really knew Allie. So I was like, I'm just gonna have to sit next to her because I don't know who else I would sit next to. So I just grabbed a middle seat and yeah, and then we were off. I'm Allie DeVries. I'm a senior and I'm 18. First day, <laughs> we got to the school and we sang before we got on the bus. That was, that was fun, that was cool. And then we basically traveled the whole day. We stopped at that water place to eat. You remember Nantahala? I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Nana Halen, Nana, Nana, how do you say it? <laughs> Nana Hala. is that how you say it? We uh, we went through uh, we went to a thrift shop first, and um, we met one of Mr. Burden's really good friends and um, sang a song for them. That was really cool to be spontaneous and just sing in a public area. I thought that was really cool. Singing in the thrift shop, I had never really done anything like that before. But it was different. I mean, Mr. Burden kind of just woke me up and was like, hey, Allie's, like, Allie needs to put together a song because we're stopping in like one minute. Something that I'd never done before. <laughs> the house that we stayed in was so nice. At first, when we drove up, 
I thought it was smaller than what it was going to be. And then we walked in and we actually started like looking around and I was like, whoa, this is actually really big. I would take that house. To be honest, that ho I, I thought the house was awesome. I loved it. I, I think the whole, you know, rooms having a theme and everything was awesome. And I just like the whole layout of the house. I thought it was great. I love my grandparents' house. It's got a lot of land, which is fun. You don't have to see your neighbors. <laughs> I loved living there. We spent a lot of weekends working in the workshop with my grandpa, making crafts and all that. My grandma was very artistic. In our downtime, the first night we like played cards. We just goofed, goofed off, basically. Um, we played, we played spoons one night. We played apples to apples. Um, <laughs> Spoons was fun, even though I got out on the first round. It was really funny to watch everyone, Emma Ray and Patrick and Miss Kennedy. <laughs> did I, I did, I fought Emma Ray over a spoon. And then Patrick also fought Emma Ray over a spoon too. But yeah, oh, okay, Kat did too. Well, Emma Ray's apparently meme coming to spoons, but. <laughs> I am very competitive when it comes to spoons. Um, it kind of just started off with us all doing our own thing, and so I was up u usually pretty early just because of the whole time change thing, and then I'm usually up early anyway. Um, so I would usually go out there and just sit out there on the porch for a little bit and just, you know, do a devotion on my own. Um, but then eventually, you know, Allie would come out, Kat would come out, Tyler would come out, and eventually everyone would be out there just sitting there, and we'd all read whatever, you know, some whatever we wanted to read that night, um, morning, and then all sang a song or two together in the morning. And so it was just a great way to start, start the day. Workshops on the second day were really special for me because Nick, the one who was helping with the voice people, <laughs> he was my old voice coach. He gave me voice lessons for about a year. And so it was really special for me to be able to kind of like go back to that and have him kind of coach me again and to show him how much my voice has changed. He still yelled at me a lot, but <laughs> but it's okay, that's just Nick. I really liked what he was sharing about like authenticity and worship. I think that's something that I've kind of learned how to do and like we all have started to work on is being real and vulnerable. All right, they don't need some fake version of you. They don't need some made up version of you. They need the best version of you. All right, God created you with all your personality ticks with all your, your, your flaws that you think you have, most of you probably think you have a lot more flaws than you actually do. I want you to be able to get on that stage and, and, and just be real. And that was just like the first time we all kind of hung out and had fun together. Like, it didn't feel like a scheduled practice. It was just, we were all hanging out and like learning together. From the very second we walked in the door, it was just obvious the part of the people to help us and to, to work with us. Uh, they fed us breakfast, and then we jumped into some workshops where we split off with the instrumentalist and the vocalist and the percussion guys, and they just spent some time, members of their worship team, teaching us, uh, just telling us some things that will help us. And uh, after we finished, we played some team bonding games and different things like that, so it was a fun day. I also lived in Ponderosa for a little while. We lived there for, I want to say like four or five months around there. We lived in one of their little tiny cabins. And um, it is an amazing place. The camp's beautiful. And the sky swing was really fun. I was terrified to go on that swing. I ended up going twice, so I was really proud of myself because I hate heights. Ponderosa was actually on a mountain that was about I think a 30 or 45 minute drive from where we were. And uh, we got to Ponderosa early enough that we were able to uh, hike on some trails and do the sky swing and a few different things. But we were singing that night at um, like an informal youth gathering. We really enjoyed it. It was our first time being on stage on the trip. So I think there were a lot of nerves and different things, but uh, it was overall a good experience.
it was pretty stressful that night. And I just remember going down to the basement and we all like prayed together and like, kind of like, not like, we like rallied and I don't know, it gave me a little bit of confidence. And once we got on stage and started performing, I just felt very comfortable. Not only did I think we did pretty well in, the pro in um, performing that night, but I, th I got hit really hard in that performance. I don't know why, I don't know if there's something on me or what, but it hit me pretty hard. And after that first night, I could kind of tell, I was like, all right, this is gonna be a good trip. I feel like that was when we first started to realize that we could worship without everybody in the crowd worshiping with us. I think that's when we really started to realize that it was that we set the tone, not the crowd, which I think was really important for us going on to the rest of the tour. I love Life Point. They're always going to be a home church to me. Like every time I go there, I just kind of feel like I can breathe and feel like I'm home. So it was very special for me. Sometimes in songs, I mess up a lot because I sing I sing like old cathedral hymns and not like the upbeat songs that we sing during Roar. And so I liked it because it was really loud and even if I messed up, no one could really hear me. It was really great because we were all, that was the first moment that I felt like all of us were really different from who we were before because we were all completely lost in worship. And it was a memory I'm always going to cherish because just looking around and having all my friends, it was making me emotional too. It was just a great experience. So I really liked Life Point. That was a good day. That was probably one of my favorites, just because it was really cool to see everyone worship together. Like, I turned around and I had a moment where I saw all my friends just like raising their hands and they're just truly worshiping. I'm like, this is what it's all about. This is why we're on this trip. And I don't know, I think it's really important to have that time to worship with your friends and not like having to be performing for other people. Uh, we sang at the coffee house on Sunday night and the way it works at Life Point is actually have the church service going on Sunday morning and Sunday night, but they also have a coffee house. And people that, you know, might want to have coffee or um, watch the service, you know, just a little bit different experience can go to the coffee house. And at the coffee house, we performed a set and it was, most of the people there were actually some of the worship team and their families and there were some youth there too and I think that was just a time where I really felt like God used us I could you could just feel the spirit you know while we were on stage singing and I think some of the people in the audience afterwards that we talked to were you know said they were really touched really could really feel God on us that night so that was a good experience <laughs>
that was our first performance where it actually meant something to me. Um, that was like true worship that I've seen. Um, and that, and it kind of blew my mind because I was like, that's only like the second day. Um, and we're, you know, already have, we're already forming this bond. Um, so that was probably one of the most memorable performances that I've, performances that I've done with Roar. That night when we performed, I think that we could really feel the presence of God. Um, we just kept growing and growing and becoming better. And I feel like we really entered into worship instead of thinking about what the audience is thinking about us. We're just worshiping. And um, I think it really touched a lot of people that came. Pastor Nick uh, told us about you guys being down here, and I'm always really excited to hear and see young worship leaders. Uh, I saw a lot of genuine, sincere worship, and especially, this is like this for anybody, that you can get very caught up in the moment and have it be like a look at me kind of moment, but you guys... You just don't really do any of that. It's very refreshing. I learned that worship with this younger generation is most definitely alive and well. And there is a group of kids that don't really fit the mold of every other young um, group of people out there. And that's very hopeful and very encouraging. Um, because it takes a lot of guts to be able to be steadfast in this kind of environment, especially for you young guys. It's just so important and hard, um, but you just, you seem to be doing it beautifully, and that was awesome. We met at a coffee shop with Q that morning. Jamocha's, that was the one. Uh, they had some really good hot chocolate. There, it was pretty good. I really like Hugh. It was cool to talk to him again. Um, uh, and the coffee was fantastic, which made me happy. So it, that overall, the whole morning was very good. I like that. My white girl coffee, I got it that morning. It was good, it was yeah. very good. Hugh, I don't even really know how to describe Hugh. Like he's just, he is not your typical, what you think of as a Southern Baptist pastor. Like he's just a, Funny, interesting guy, but it's the biggest thing I take away from Q is that he obviously has a heart for people, all people really. He, one thing he told us that just kind of stuck is, you know, at the end of the day, you can answer to any situation, Jesus died for you. And that was just, you could see that all over him. That's what he cared about. And so he was just a person, even since the trip that I've, kept thinking about what he said in my mind because that's the attitude you know that we should have. But I want you guys to experience the fullness of Christ in your life the way you're supposed to. Knowing that the thing you had to pursue in this world, you don't have to pursue being the greatest worship person. You don't have to pursue being an incredible pastor if you want a pastor. You don't have to you know pursue being a great missionary if that's what you want to be your teacher or athlete, whatever you decide to pursue, you don't have to do that to try to be the greatest. What you have to do you have to love the people around you the way that Christ loved you. That's the covenant. And all those other pressures that come on you, they're not from God. They're not. They're from the world. When you're loving people the way Christ loves you, you'll be the best you're supposed to be at whatever you do. DeSoto Falls, it was so beautiful. It was such a big waterfall, and it was just really cool to take a day to look back at everything. As we like drove through the mountains, it just really hit me how big the world was and like how beautiful it all was and how amazing it, it is that God created us along with everyone else in the world and everything else He made. 
and there are so many people. It's not just like Statesville, <laughs> but it was really cool just to think about that. Caleb was like, oh yeah, we took, we took like a, a mild hike and we had to like climb over rocks and down rocks and he'd be like, oh yeah, you can climb on the side of the mountain. No thanks, <laughs> like we're good. I mean, I like to hike, so it's just kind of like a normal hiking day. I fell a couple times. I mean, that's like, we were all expecting that because I'm clumsy. It was hot though. The Soto Falls was fun. I'm not really an, a hiking type of girl, but it was fun. The places that Caleb took us was cool because I'd never done anything like that before. And I liked how <laughs> the boys had their candles lit, <laughs> actually lit while they were hiking. Before we left Q, we went to lunch with him and a couple of us went into the Mexican grocery store right next to it. And um, we found some Pope John Paul II candles and that was one of my highlights of the whole entire trip. <laughs> Help us in our fatigue, forgive our failure, and guide our travels on the path of the good. Give us the happiness of a full life that help us walk on this earth as happy and pilgrims that look forward to an endless life. God stay with us. We found us. Catholic candles, and we saw a Pope, it was a Pope John Paul II, and we grabbed three of them, Tyler, Patrick, and I were like, all right, this is happening. We're going to these caves, and we're lighting them in these caves and taking a cult picture. And I don't really know why or how that happened, but we wound up making a picture holding the candles lit in a cave. So that was that. And, oh, that was the funniest thing in the world. Um, after the cave, we went to this little church up on the mountain that was built into a rock, and that was really cool because... Once again, we also had a little spontaneous uh, worship in the church. I liked it. I thought it was cool because like, we went in there and Tyler started playing the piano and we just burst it out into song. I thought that was really cool. I liked how when we came in and we saw the piano, Tyler started playing and we all just worshiped. Um, and that was just really special. Just stopping somewhere and just having the freedom to worship, it was just really cool. We went to Kusa Christian School and we were told before we got there that it was going to be kind of more formal, that we needed to dress up, you know, more formal than maybe some of our other casual performances. But they didn't actually tell the students that we were having chapel that day. So we got there and we were kind of more formal dressed and everybody was casual. So that was, you know, just a little bit awkward. <laughs> is Garrett Arnold, the man, man. and Patrick Ferguson, the Pope. <laughs> These guys are the brains of this operation right here. They keep it going, so hopefully, without these two, none of this is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Christian was pretty awesome. Um, I think it was a great experience for me personally because that's when I was told that I really truly opened up during that which was really great encouragement for me and it was kind of when I first everybody else in the group had kind of learned to let go at that point but I was still pretty nervous about it but I think it was when I first really and truly let go. How, how do you like being my grandma? Yeah. I 
just love her. I, these 18 years have just flown by. I'm telling you, she was just the perfect little child. Oh, really? And now she's growing up into a wonderful how did you feel about the songs today and stuff? I love them. Yeah, it was just a worshipful experience. It was just wonderful. We were just really surprised. It was so good. And we knew y'all could sing. Arrived at our hotel. We're in Shreveport, Louisiana. We're all tired. I'm now a huge supporter of Donald Trump's infrastructure plan to fix the roads and bridges in America. I had a really, like my whole dream was like being Catholic. <laughs> of course it was. Because you are Catholic, Patrick. Why the Pope? Did Pope John Paul II appear to you? No, he didn't. No, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Nice hair, Patrick. Thanks. The day we were supposed to go to Lake Country Christian, we woke up, got ready to drive into Texas, and it was 33 degrees and raining there. We saw Mr. Earwood and Miss Earwood. That was really exciting. When we drove up, he was outside, and everyone was just piling out of the bus to go and give him a hug. And then we went and surprised Miss Earwood, and everyone was crying. And it was just really cool to see them again. These are students from uh, the school that Ms. Earwood and I came from in Statesville, North Carolina. These are our sixth graders. And they're going to be here today for, uh, for chapel. They're, uh, they're a praise team that's going to be leading us in, uh, in some praise. So I'm not writing it on the board, but I'll just tell it to you all. And then you're also I fell down this morning and I scraped my elbow. I was going to go to the doctor, but I didn't want to make a rash decision. <laughs> that was amazing, seeing the Earwoods. I mean, it made me sad just because... I miss them, I think they did a lot for our school, but talking with him, he really made it clear that he knows that God told them that they're supposed to be in Texas. So, I mean, he's following the Lord, so I can't be mad about that. We start setting up for our show that we were gonna do, and Mr. Eard was like, I think we're gonna have to cancel school. It started sleeting, so we were really disappointed because we were like, oh no, we can't do either of these, but Mr. Earwood said that there would still be some that would stay. I've always felt in my heart when something like this happens that God has something else in store. I can't tell you how many times in life it goes the way I didn't have in mind. And that, you know, when God is great at making lemonade out of lemons. But we did end up having a uh, show for them and um, leading them in some worship. But they had half of their student body because Mr. Earwood, he was like, we're gonna call off school. If you wanna come get your kid, you can. So we had a little less than half. The chapel was pretty good. Um, all of us agree it was our worst performance, but it was really cool because afterwards we were still hearing from the Earwoods that it was a very anointed time of worship. 
which I think was very, very important for all of us to hear, that even when we're not at our best, we still can worship at our best. Even with only about half of the students at the school actually being there for the chapel, I had so many people come up to me afterwards and just say, your group is anointed. It was obvious. And there were a few students that I could see that really cared about leading worship. And they were, this one kid was crying because he was so burdened over his you know, fellow students and uh, maybe some that weren't participating in worship. So that was just cool to see as a good experience. Uh, Steven is a favorite, definitely. Um, I know other people have talked about him. Um, he called me Chinese when we were at the ice cream shop because I started laughing because he said, oh yeah, a lot of people mistake me for Brad Pitt, especially when I take off my shirt. And I just started laughing so hard. And he was like, oh, she went Chinese on us. But I definitely know that Patrick and Garrett and Tyler have talked about Steven. Steven, my man. He's actually my spirit animal, not gonna lie. <laughs> Patrick and Steven are very similar. Um, Steven, man, he's, ah, uh, <laughs> Steven. Every night after we kind of got home, got settled back in, take showers, stuff like that, get ready for bed, um, we'd all come together and just talk about the day. Things that impacted us, things we did, you know, things we thought could be better, things that impacted us, um, different things like that. And it was really cool because not only did you get to see your own perspective of how things went that day, but you got to see a lot of others. And then the fast forward um, was just, you know, what we're doing in the morning and what to expect and, you know, things like that. Something I will always cherish is when we were all in the locker room doing the fast forward and rewind that night. It was very emotional, but when I was saying goodbye to Mr. Earwood, something that he told me was he reminded me of a conversation we had had before he left, and he just reminded me that God's really using me right now, and it's something I'm always going to take with me, and it was such a good moment to get that closure with the Earwoods, and I just, I love them, and I'm always going to miss them. I see about 30 minutes. It's really early, guys. Oh, you want left side, I'll take middle. All right, Absolutely. since these ladies come out with things, please meet them, get their stuff, and get it loaded. We're already past our leave time. It is approximately 6 a.m. And it's like 25 degrees. Baby, hook him. You should, you should send him this Texas A&M because he hates Texas A&M. Yeah. We went to Visible Music College in Memphis and we toured their facility and we met some of their students there and they talked to us a little bit about how campus life was. It was cool. I mean, it was a bit overwhelming just because everyone there seemed so professional. And for me, like, I'm looking at possibly doing a music major or something, but everyone like knew what they wanted to do and it was a bit scary because like I don't even know, I don't have an idea. So like they're already talking about producers and studio recordings and stuff and it kind of scared me, but it was a cool concept. Sun Records, yeah. that was awesome to go there. We saw from everything from guitars that Elvis played to the very microphone he sang into to Johnny Cash's stuff. Like it was just awesome to be able to see all that. As a music person, that was cool. Um, so that morning after we ate, we were waiting for everyone to come down and Dorothy was working there. Miss Dorothy, she was a sweetheart. I love her. We were down at breakfast and she was setting everything up and started asking us where we were going, what all of us were doing in Mississippi. She said, oh, well, that's really awesome. I hope y'all have a really great trip. Are you going to sing for me? We were all like, OK, <laughs> that works, I guess. So we decided to sing How Great Is Our God. 
just seeing her reaction was really awesome and kind of a confidence booster for all of us. So she was very, very enthusiastic about it. We went to a radio station in Wayne City, Illinois, I believe it was, and uh, we actually recorded a little bit of Mr. Burden talking on air with the host, and we also sang a song. The studio is packed with students from uh, Statesville Christian School in North Carolina. Oh yeah. And uh, you guys are you guys are busy. Yeah, we've got uh, with me included 17 on the road on this trip. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a very special time that you guys are uh, on the road with. Uh, a worship team, and you call yourselves Roar. That was really cool. I remember putting the headphones on while we were recording our song and hearing what it would sound like if it was on the radio. Um, that was really cool because I think that, that was just like a first time experience for all of us, so we all kind of shared in that experience together. It was cool being back in Evansville and being at Triple T. I've spent many, 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 many times there. So yeah, that was really cool for me, and I love Tammy and George. They're super sweet, and I've known them for a very long time. I think the performance at Triple T went really well. Um, it was kind of a rough night for all of us. We were all really tired, and I know Allie's throat was hurting really, really bad, so we cut a few things a little short, trying to make sure that she wasn't too bad for the next day. I really think Triple T's ministry is a very good thing and it was a pretty cool experience. The last day was in Illinois. That was a really good service for us, personally. Okay. Um, I know there were lots and lots of tears by the time we were done singing. said in to me that like we were leaving it was like probably one of the best weeks of my life like all condensed like into this um, little bit of time I just really enjoyed seeing all of us um, grow in our faith and our friendship with each other there like at the end of that performance we were all crying and but it was good it wasn't like oh we're sad it was like God is so good you know you know worship to me has always been um, how instruments sound, where the vocals. This trip, I really, because we didn't really have too many instruments, um, I got to just kind of focus on the vocals for once in a while. It, it just changed a lot because I was listening to these, listening to the music. Because usually when I listen to music, it's all instruments, instruments. And I started listening to the words that everyone was singing in these songs. And it was just kind of hitting me like, you know, whoa. You know, all these things they were saying in the music. Um, it just changed everything. This trip has, really changed me when it comes to worship. Um, before this, I I mean, like I always knew, because I mean, my dad's my Bible teacher, so I get it all the time, but that worship wasn't just what you did on stage, it was a lifestyle and it was something that you acted out off the stage as well. And, um, but really, this tour really put that into perspective for me. It really made me more comfortable in my worship. I remember we were coming home on the last day and I was just thinking about the beginning of the trip and I felt like I was a completely different person. I'd become so close to everyone. The trip really just encouraged me in my faith and brought me closer to God. Um, the last day of the tour, I had a lot of mixed emotions. A lot of me, like 90%, just wanted to keep going on with the tour because I wasn't ready to leave you guys. I just wanted to keep ministering in the ways that I, that we were doing it and it was really sad it was a sad day I was we were all a little bit depressed on the way back because we knew that it was over in a well in a way it was over but in another way 
it was kind of just beginning because it was a different journey that we were starting on the way back. <laughs> 